we are in the middle of a series right now, the Ten Commandments. You guys know which ones we've done, and hopefully uh, uh, holding the principles that are behind these commandments. And so what I feel like God is saying through those Ten Commandments is not necessarily a, a law, so to speak, but there are principles behind them that actually create, make us uh, a deeper relationship that creates a deeper relationship with God. So uh, we talked about the first Sunday, we talked two of them in a row, no other gods before me. The principle behind that was priority. Then it was no, thou shalt not have any idols. And the principle behind that was purity. Uh, last Sunday we did thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. And we, we brought out the principle of humility. And so uh, this morning, if you have your Bibles, turn to Exodus chapter 20. We're going to be there almost every Sunday, so uh, you should have it bookmarked by now. Maybe have your little ribbon pulled in place. Uh, this morning, we're going to talk about the principle of rest. The principle of rest and how it comes into play with one of the Ten Commandments. I, I, this is very interesting to me as I study these Ten Commandments. The, today's commandment is remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And then he goes on to, to describe exactly what that should look like <coughs> and why it should look like that. And he did not do that for any of the other commandments. They were short and sweet and to the point. This one here, he got pretty lengthy in his description of what it should look like. And so it makes me wonder if over the years we have lost some of the holiness or some of the importance, so to speak, or the purpose of remembering the Sabbath day. I remember as a kid, uh, we, we would, uh, some of us like to water ski. And there were people that did not think we should water ski, but would have rather had us go ride horse. So I, I, me and horses don't get along. I don't, I don't care for horses. Every time I've gotten on a horse, it has been a very dramatic experience. And you guys know me, I'm not any drama at whatsoever. So it had to be really, really bad. Uh, but I did not enjoy horseback riding. I don't enjoy being really around horses. I like the smell. I kind of like the top of their nose. That's it. I don't care for horses, period. I would have not made a good Amish person because I can't handle a horse. So, but this was some people's idea. It was in the family. They thought, well, we could go horseback riding, but we shouldn't go water skiing. So there's a debate on how holy you keep the Sabbath day. How many grew up like that? There were debates whether you should fish or not, or whether you should go hunting or not. There was always this, this, this argument, or not argument, but debate on how holy we keep the Sabbath. And so this morning we're going to dive in. We're going to see what God says. Not Jimmy. Not anyone in here, but what God says about it. Now, I understand that it was Old Testament, and things changed since the cross, but hey, it, is, it was something that was very near and dear to God. And if you look uh, from verse 8 all the way through verse 11, Damon, if you could bring that up. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Verse 9, six days you shall labor. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, somebody pray for my throat. I, I've been dealing with last night some allergies or something set in, and so keep praying for me. Verse 9, six days you shall labor and do all your work. Verse 10, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do, somebody help me, no work. You, nor your son, don't send him out to mow the grass or wash the car, right? Nor your daughter, don't make her wash the dishes. Oh, you got to pass there, babe. Nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, uh-oh, nor your stranger within your gates. He covers all the bases in one simple verse, right? Lavin, for in six days the Lord made the heavens. And so he starts that verse out for, F-O-R. It stands for, this is the reason that you shouldn't do this. It's because the Lord made all of his stuff in six days. And if you look around at the creation that he created, it's quite something what he accomplished in six days time. Am I right? The universe the sea and everything that's in it, the earth and all the green grass and the trees and everything, you and I, six days, he made it. And on the seventh day, and all that is, the sea and all that is in them, verse 11, and rested the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. 
and hallowed, we learned last week with taking the Lord thy name, the, the name of the Lord thy God in vain, we learned that hallowed just means holy or set apart. So he has all these six days set, but one he's going to set apart. And I really don't think that it, we need to get caught up on exactly which day it is. If you want to observe Tuesdays as your holy day, I don't think that that is going to make a difference to God, but that you set one day aside that you don't do any work. And work in our day is emails, right? Text, business. I fall guilty. I'll be sitting at home on a Sunday afternoon and I get an email from a customer who's ready to order. What do I do? leave you hanging. Say, uh, I don't want your money today. I'll get it tomorrow. What is the right thing to do? And so we need to be mindful of what God has commanded. Today's believers, though, I, I feel like it, it, it's quite ironic how we get caught up in the Ten Commandments and we say, well, we would never have any gods before him. We know that that's not right. We would never have any idols, right? And number three is we would never take his name in vain. We, we don't pick up his name and carry it in vain or in a haughty spirit, or we don't even curse with his name in it. We know that that's wrong. We know that that really dives in. It cuts into our heart when we hear it, right? We believe that we should honor our father and mother. We skipped over the Sabbath day now. We're going on down the line. We know we shouldn't kill. We know we shouldn't commit adultery. We know we shouldn't steal. We shouldn't bear false witness. We know that. We are not going to lie. That's wrong. And we know we're not supposed to covet. But man, do we have a hard time of keeping the Sabbath day holy. Or am I just the only one? Can I get an amen? We have a hard time with it. Why do we have such a hard time with this one? When all the others are just as important. This is just as important as all the others. And somehow in our conscience, we know that when we say a lie, we know that the Holy Spirit convicts us, we got to go make it right. When we steal something, if the Holy Spirit lives within us, we know that we got to go make that right. Some people would say, well, you wouldn't steal in the first place. We'll get into that later. Right? When we wrong someone, we, the, the Holy Spirit convicts us, we know we need to make it right. But if I mow my grass on Sunday, am I convicted of it? I'm going to be honest with you. I have done it. I always mow my grass at home on Sunday and go down to the farm and mow, or uh, on Saturday and mow on the farm on Sunday because nobody sees me. After I study this, I say, you know what, Jimmy? You're a hypocrite. You shouldn't do that. So we have to change some things. My goal is today is to give us some reasons why we should apply the principle of rest to our lives. Reason number one is it gives God, if you read scripture and you study what the children of Israel were going through at the time, it gives God an opportunity to do something supernatural, to provide supernaturally for us. And if we work on Sunday, we're saying we don't trust him. You know what, God? I don't trust you that I could get this done or I don't trust you that I can get my bills paid. And so I'm going to take a job and work part-time on Sunday because you know what? I'm having a hard time. And God is saying, I want to do something supernaturally for you the same way that I did for the children of Israel. And it's quite something, I, as I study this, and, and I might have some of this wrong, and theologically, Phil and Furman can help me out on this, but they were actually supposed to let the land rest every seven years. Am I right in saying that, Furman, Phil? They were supposed to let God, want, he was so intrigued by this rest thing that you plow the land, you cultivate the land, you plant it, you harvest it, you do it for seven years, but, but then I want one year break, six years, one year break, seven years. And they stopped doing that. And they continued this behavior for 490 years. Now, you would think if you do something for 490 years and there was no punishment, right, that what? He forgot about it, right? It's kind of like if you, if you kids start doing something that you know mom and dad told you not to, and then all of a sudden it's gone so long you wonder if they forgot about it. Well, God didn't forget about it. And after the 490 years, he said, look, you guys have got to pay me back all of those years that you didn't give to me. And so he went and put him into slavery for 70 years. Am I right, Furman, Phil? It was 70 years. 
that they were put into exile total because of not honoring what God Sabbath was in the land. Now, if he likes land and he acknowledges land to be rested like that, what does he think about you? How does he feel about us as humans? And so we, we don't work seven days a week. It, when we don't work seven days a week, it gives him the opportunity to provide for us supernaturally. Uh, in Exodus chapter 16, he provided manna. These, the, the, the children of Israel were hungry. <clears throat> and so he supernaturally provided manna every day. And the, the description of that was, that this, this was their instructions. You go out on Monday, you get enough to eat. You go out on Tuesday, you get enough to eat. But don't take too much. We don't want you to have too much because if you have too much, it's going to start to stink, it's going to spoil, and there's going to be worms in it. Remember the story? <clears throat> and so, but on the sixth day, they were allowed and were instructed to go out and get double portion because then it wouldn't rot and it wouldn't stink and it wouldn't have worms in it because he didn't want them gathering on the Sabbath day. Exodus 16, verse 23, it says this, Then he said to them, This is what the Lord said. He was Moses, was saying to the children of Israel, This is what the Lord has said. And this was, now granted, this was before the Ten Commandments were given to them. This was in chapter 16, the 20, in Exodus 20 is when the Ten Commandments were given them. Tomorrow is a Sabbath rest, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. Bake what you will bake today and boil what you will boil. And lay up for yourself all that remains to be kept until morning. Verse 24. So they laid it up till morning and Moses, as Moses commanded, and it did not stink, nor were there any worms in it. <clears throat> now when they kept more than they needed, it stank and it had worms in it. But God supernaturally provided this manna in the wilderness for them. And, but they were specific instructions. Don't take too much throughout the week. But then on the sixth day, take enough for the seventh, because I don't want you out there working. And in verse 25, it says, then Moses says, eat that today, for today is a Sabbath to the Lord. Today, you will not find it in the field. In other words, he was saying, you will not find it. God's not going to provide for you. You can go out there on Sunday or on the Sabbath. We call this our Sabbath. You can go out there on Sunday, but God's not going to provide for you. But I guarantee you, if you don't go if you go out, God's not gonna, you're not going to find it. But if you stay, God will provide. I'll provide enough in six days that you don't have to work on the Sabbath. But if you try to work on the Sabbath, there will be no provision for us for that day. I had to think. <clears throat> uh, I did a leadership study on Chick-fil-A. How many like Chick-fil-A? Uh, that would be good right now, wouldn't it? They're not open Sundays. And, and, and I've... I've had that frustration already, like, uh, why are they not open Sundays? And so in my leadership study, I studied that, that uh, in business, in, in the fast food industry, the number one day for fast food retail is what? Sunday, right? And they're up against, and they compete against all of the other fast food restaurants. Like it or not, that's their competition. Studies have said, and, and, and this, is, this is true, all of the other fast food restaurants in, in, in their franchises usually, on the average, average one to $1.3 million a year gross. Chick-fil-A is not open on Sunday, and they're open on, all these others are open seven days a week, and a lot of them are 24 hours, Right? And then we, we ask God to bless our food when we go through that. But anyway, we won't get into that. Chick-fil-A, do you know what? Each store on the average grosses a year. Right at five million. Right at five million. And that to me, God's saying, you know what? I will bless you when you take that approach. And you say, I will not be open on Sunday. That's our Sabbath. And we and in there phrase to their, to their workers that says, we want, you to, that we want to do this to give you an opportunity to rest and to worship. That's in their statement. That's incredible to me. They believe it. They stand for it. And God has unbelievably prospered their business. It's incredible. Some other things that he very intentionally did as a, uh, as a Sunday school teacher in his church, he always stayed with the fifth grade boys 
he wanted to be their teacher and, and the, the founder of Chick-fil-A, and he taught them. Uh, I think it was for 40-some years that he had that class, and today, most of his top people in his company, he's dead and gone, but most of the top people in his company he had in his Sunday school class at one time or another. You talk about making an impact. You talk about standing to what is true. He did it, and it was awesome. So Exodus chapter 16, verse 26, I want you to read this with me. Six days you shall gather it, but on the Sabbath day, the Sabbath, there will be none. And this is where Chick-fil-A stands, right here, from the Old Testament commandment. Now it happened that some of the people went out on the Sabbath day to gather, but they found none. See, there's no provision there. Because you're saying, God, you can't do it. I don't trust you to do that. I got to be open on Sunday. Every other fast food restaurant's open on Sunday. We have to be too. And the Lord said to Moses, how long do you refuse to keep my commandments and my laws? Verse 29, see, for the Lord has given you. Guys, this is something God has given to us, the Sabbath. It's a gift. This day, Sunday, the day of rest, is a gift from God. Therefore, he gives you on the sixth day bread for two days. Let every man remain in his place. Let no man go out of his place on the seventh day. So the people rested on the seventh day. Now, in Exodus chapter 20 is where the, the Ten Commandments are listed. But in Deuteronomy 5, they are also listed. And what I found interesting as I read both is Exodus 20, that verse starts out with, remember the Sabbath day. <clears throat> Deuteronomy 5, it starts out with, observe the Sabbath day. So if you put both words together, you would have remember and observe the Sabbath day. But in Deuteronomy 5, as he describes, remember the lengthy description in Exodus 20, as he describes it in Deuteronomy 5, remember this. He says this in, in verse 15. He says, remember that you were slaves in Egypt. And I think it's interesting to note that slaves never get a break. They never get a break. And here they were in slavery for 70 years. They worked every single day. Their bodies were broken down. Their health was destroyed. Their morale was destroyed because they were beaten and they were punished and they were made to work every single day. Slaves don't get breaks. Only the wealthy, only the elite, only the royalty got breaks. And so God said, you know what? I'm going to deliver you out of Egypt. And I, the first thing i got to get out of your mind is that you're not a slave anymore. And I want you to have one day off. It's a gift to you. It's a gift to us. Because we're the children of a king, are we not? I'm royalty. How about you? Yeah. Amen. So during the week, you can consider we're slaves to our schedule. We're slaves to our work. We're slaves to our business. We have to work. We have to provide, right? We have appointments and commitments to make, and that's slavery. But one day that we get to lay it all down, you're free. God says you don't have to work. I'll provide for you. I look at it the same way as I look at tithing. God could do so much. With the, with the tithe that we give, way more than we can with the 90% we keep, right? He can do much more. And, and if we give him the six days and allow, and allow him to have that one, that we worship him, we, we rest in him, and we, we meditate on him, he can do so much more in our lives. Look what all he did in six days. And we looked at that. The universe was, it was created in six days. And I, I uh, yeah. So, Reason number one is to give God an opportunity to provide for us supernaturally. Uh, reason number two, it gives us an opportunity to rest and to be refreshed. And I think we all look forward to it. And, and I know I do. I look forward to Sundays that I can sit and I can relax and I don't have to answer phones and I don't have to answer emails. Unless it's my choice, right? Exodus chapter 31, verse 14 you shall keep the Sabbath, therefore for, it, therefore, for it is holy to you. Everyone who profanes it shall surely be put to death. For whoever does any work on it, that person shall be cut off from among the people. This is how serious God had intended the Sabbath, it has intended the Sabbath to be. 
Verse 15, work shall be done for six days, but the Sabbath is for the Sabbath of rest, holy to the Lord. Whoever does any work on the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to finish it. What is it? Death. Wow. Verse 16, therefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath, to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations as a perpetual covenant. What does perpetual mean? means forever. It is a sign, verse 17, between me, God, and the children of Israel. How long does that mean today? Does it still mean today? Anybody? It's forever. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. It's a sign. As a retailer in Berlin, uh, I get asked the question so often, uh, we close at five. Uh, and, and most of the people come in and they say, does every store close at five? And I'm like, yeah, most of them do. Most of them do. Uh, I know if they go to Kime Lumber on Saturdays, they really fuss about that, that they're closed at lunchtime. But they have put that in place so that their employees can be with their families. And you know what? God has blessed them tremendously. And this is the same way with going home at five o'clock. Yeah, we are retail and it would look nice to be open till eight, nine o'clock. I know it would. But what would that do to my employees and to myself in, in my family life? And so on Sundays, I get to tell them why we're not open Sundays. They, they, they come in from, from these big cities, and they're expecting us to be open Sundays. Some of their first-time visitors are like, why are you not open on Sunday? And so I, I have a stack of business cards from Light in the Valley, and I always <laughs> go over to the drawer. I open it. I get a business card out, and I say, hey, if you want something to do, here you go. And so far, we've had uh, quite a, a considerable amount of people show up when I give them that card. And it's interesting, the look on their face is like, well, they weren't expecting to come to church. And a lot of times they're like, well, we, we, we don't have church clothes. I'm like, really? What do you got on? Like, that's how we come to church. And so it, it is a really, it's a sign. In verse 17, it's a sign between God and the children of Israel forever. This is a sign. This is a way that we can witness to people that come from out of town at, at, into our community. And, and it is nice uh, to have a community like this. I was born and raised in South Carolina, and a lot of things and stores and businesses were open on Sunday, just like any other day. And it's awesome to live in a community where, you know what, sidewalks do roll up, and we do it in the name of the Lord. And it's, it's refreshing. Uh, refreshing in that verse as uh, on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed if you look that word up in Hebrew the word refreshed means breathe in breathe in so he rested and breathed in now if you think about it, pretty significant that on six days he spoke every time you speak you're breathing out am I right so he spoke things in to be and on the very last day on the sixth day he breathed into the nostrils of man and he was tired. I don't think he was tired, but he did it very intentionally. He said, I have breathed out for six days. I'm going to breathe in, and I'm going to be refreshed, and I want you to do the very same thing. Reason number three that we should rest on the Sabbath day is there are consequences when we don't rest. He is very, very clear in Numbers chapter 15, verse 32. <clears throat> now, while the children of Israel were in the wilderness... They found a man gathering sticks. Somebody say gathering sticks. He wasn't murdering anyone. He wasn't committing adultery. He wasn't a rebellious child. He was unbelievable. But it was on the Sabbath day. In verse 33, he says this, And those who found him brought him to Moses and Aaron and to all the congregation. They put him under guard for gathering sticks. Because it had not been explained what they should have done to him. In verse 35, then the Lord said to Moses, the man must surely be put to death. All the congregation shall stone him with stones outside the camp. So, as the Lord commanded Moses, all the congregation brought him outside the camp and they stoned him with stones. And he died because he was There's only four reasons in the Old Testament that it required someone to be put to death. Four. 
Gathering sticks wasn't one of them. But it was because he was doing it on the Sabbath. Okay? Murder was one. They would stone him to death for murder. They would stone him to death for adultery. They would stone him to death for rebellious children. If the children were rebellious, they would take him and, and stone him to death and not keeping the Sabbath day. Those four reasons. And yet, if we wake up on a Sabbath day and want to go do something in the yard, we do it, right? Gather sticks. Mow the grass. You make the list. And I think God is saying, you know what? That's how it was be before the cross. But I want you to know, you work seven days a week. You don't take that specific day and rest. You're killing yourself. And those are the consequences that we get when we don't rest. God has given us a wonderful gift of rest. Reason number four that we should rest on the Sabbath day is there are blessings when we do rest. There are blessings when we rest. Uh, Mark chapter 2, verse 23. This is now the New Testament. It happened that he, Jesus, went through the grain fields on the Sabbath. And as they went, his disciples began to pluck the heads of grain. And the Pharisees said to him, Look, why do they do what is not lawful on the Sabbath? But he said to them, Have you ever read what David did when he was in need and hungry? He and those with him. How he went into the house of God in the days of Abiathar, the high priest, and ate the showbread, which is not lawful to eat except for the priests, and also gave some to those who were with him. Verse 27, he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Therefore, the Son of Man is also the Lord of the Sabbath. In other words, God didn't make this a legalistic issue. Okay? He created the Sabbath day for you not the other way around. He didn't make man for the Sabbath. And we need to take it as a holy gift from God. And we need to reverence it. And we need to keep it holy the way that he wants us to keep it holy. If the band would want to come. You know, I, I had to think when our batteries run low on our phones. I, I was doing some study. And did you know that 66% of all phone users check their phone even when there's no alert or any vibration or call. And I don't know. I would, I'm, I'm, not, I'm going to go out on a limb and say this statistic is wrong. They say 44% of people sleep with their phone by their head. I would say 100%, including five-year-olds. Yeah? So why would we do that? But when the battery gets low, what's the first thing we do? We run to char recharge it. I mean, that's the same way for our lives. We have six days to work. And I enjoy working. I do. I enjoy getting up. I enjoy going to work. But I also enjoy my day when I get to recharge. We live in a fast-paced world. We drink coffee to get going. Some people resort to alcohol to wind down, and then others get energy drinks to get pumped back up. Last night, we were sitting around uh, at Glenn's there after the uh, graduation party, and Larry pulls up a picture of that kidney that had, anybody see it on Facebook, that from a uh, energy drink, they cut it open. Anybody see it? I've seen it numerous times, but it was just a good reminder that, you know what, that's the life that we live. That's the cycle that we live in every day. God's asking us to rest. What would it look like if we all did proper rest? God designed the Sabbath very intentionally for us. There's a blessing. There's a list of blessings. And I'm going to just name a few from resting. For me, I get inspired. When I intentionally sit down, not to watch TV, not to do, just meditate on God, meditate on his word, meditate in prayer, I get inspired. There's things that well up inside of me. My creativity flows better when I rest. And when we rest, we find our feelings of compassion easier and our empathy is easier we may, we can sense uh the love for others easier in other words our mission statement that we had back there when we rest we are more intent on getting things like that done heavier feelings like anger pain 
and hate those lift when we rest. It's amazing <laughs> in our house. I don't know how it is at yours, but we need our rest. And our kids are natured uh, that when they get depleted in their sleep, when, they, when it's time to go to bed, there's almost no reasoning there. Right? It's the same way we're working seven days a week. If we were to do that, we would be too tired. We need to rest. It's good to take a rest. I always tell them, hey, go to bed. We'll talk about it in the morning. We'll discuss this in the morning. Won't ask for an altar call there. But that's our house. Sleep, rest, does the body good. It makes for a healthier life. Would you guys stand with me? These are some of the blessings. I believe God knew exactly what he was doing when he created the seventh day. And I know there's things going through everybody's mind in here of things that we could do better in keeping the Sabbath day holy. I'm going to leave that up to you guys. That's between you and God. But I would challenge you to look at it through Scripture, the way that he wrote it in the Old Testament. If it was that important that somebody would be put to death for gathering sticks, then I know that I'm guilty in some of those areas. And I believe God, he wants to refresh us. He wants us to feel good. I know Jesse biking all the way across America. He couldn't have done it without rest every day. Am I right, Jason? It's mandatory that we rest. It's a God design. Father God, I just thank you for.